you guys know I love talking all things Xbox and PlayStation. I, I love talking about when somebody's doing great. I love talking about when either of the heads of these platforms, like when Phil Spencer goofs up and doesn't come through with a promise or even Herman Holst puts all of his weight behind something as crazy as Concord, right? I love giving my two cents about it. But this time around, we, we got to change it up because I now got to ask you the question. In light of a lot of the recent events, like the reaction from the Xbox community about Tokyo Game Show. Look, the way Phil even looked at Tokyo Game Show, bro looks stressed. The reaction to Shattered Space, the, the, the demoralization of the Xbox community, like they're not even talking about anything uplifting on the community front anymore. The ambassador program has been eradicated. Like in lieu of all this stuff that has hit so heavy in regards to Xbox in 2024 in not a positive way, I'm now going to turn the tables and ask you, because I need help understanding this. What in the world is a new Xbox going to do? Like, seriously, I'm not trying to be facetious. Help me understand that. Let's talk about this. Let's get into it. This is the spill. Yeah. What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K here of Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage, and MM2K Gaming. Back again with another episode of The Spill. Um, this is where we talk about the latest and greatest in video gaming news, but I'm going to be honest with you. This one is going to be more ranty than anything. Um, and I'm not going to take forever doing it because this is just like a real simple, straightforward question that I'm hoping to get help from you on. But before we get into all that, who's a huge favorite, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please. It's like I said in a bumper, man. Like I, I really woke up this morning and said to myself, I am an X. I, I tried to imagine I'm an Xbox gamer, right? Imagine being an Xbox gamer and imagine investing $500 in a console or even 300. Imagine what you were told at the beginning of the generation that this Xbox Series X uh, was the world's most powerful console. And when you were asking about the power, like how powerful is it? You know, Xbox was telling you some things in videos that they've had to unlist, right? But we, we, we downloaded them. We got them. Um, Game Pass was supposed to be this ultimate treasure that would bring you the best in gaming. It's fallen flat. And I'm just talking pure delivery here. This is not me trying to kick in Phil Spencer's ribs. I'm just talking what the gamers have been delivered. You thought you were going to get the best games. You thought, okay, I exclusively had Starfield, which is the game of the generation. And look, even though if you want to cap for it, you guys know deep down inside you, no one's, I, I, I cannot record your reactions to this video and document it and put it on the internet. You can just say this to yourself. I know, I know, I know Starfield was mad. I know it was mad. You, you, that's all you got to do. Say it to yourself. I know Starfield didn't do what it was supposed to do. I, I get it. You know what I mean? It was not what it was cracked up to be. And it's not living up to a type. We've seen the reaction to Shattered Space. We've seen what, what was the poor delivery in uh, Redfall. We're seeing all this stuff that you guys were waiting for and you were excited for. And now it's gotten to the point that you've been disappointed so much. You don't even know if to be excited for Indiana Jones. I mean, it's not exclusive. It's going to PlayStation. So now it's got you contemplating. Why do I even, why did I even buy this box? Why did I spend 500 for it? 300 for it. I was told it was the world most powerful console. I was told it was going to play 1440p games uh, at 60 frames per second consistently. It only did that with the old games. Like uh, the, the pure promise of these boxes were more active as a mid-gen, mid-gen refresh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a second mid-gen refresh. They're great with the older games, but as far as all the aspirations and hopes that you had with the newer games, they've completely fallen flat. Then you look at the community. They don't even know. They can't even be excited about Xbox anymore. So what they've gone to, or what they've gravitated to is hating on PlayStation. That's all they can do now. 
And then when you convert over to the Xbox brass, like, is there any hope there? Maybe it's just we're overreacting. Maybe we're just spreading doom and gloom and FUD, and we're just overreacting and, and, and not just enjoying games. When you look at the Xbox brass, I mean, Phil Spencer looks like he hasn't eaten in decades. Even Sarah Bond looks stressed. Like, they, they did not look joyful. They did not look gleeful. It looks like every time they talk about this new Xbox post ABK, that it's like pulling teeth out of a freaking turtle, man. It does, it, does, it does not look like extrapolating happiness out of these folks is plausible. Pulling teeth out of a turtle, right? So... My, my question is, in lieu of all this mind share that they lost, in lieu of the fact that you've already had a situation where you pretty much had the lead in mind share, all right, going into the Xbox One generation, you had the lead in mind share. It might have been ever so slight, but you still had it. And you lost it. And you were to take those years in the Xbox One generation to rebound and go full gusto and can become competitive again. And for that effort to fall flatter than ever before. My question is, with this regime, if throwing everything but the kitchen sink at you, if they cannot get Mindshare back, then what's the point? Why is there another Xbox? Why will there be one? And why is the community even looking at this in a comparative nature? Here's my thoughts, y'all. Like I said, we're not going to be here long this time around. I truly think that you have two options here if you're part of the Xbox community. And you, you know, you either got to decide, A, are we going to be competitive or B, or are we gonna kick and scratch and claw for survival? If you want to go with B, then this then what you need to do is support Phil Spencer and whatever he does. Don't complain about it. Just support Phil Spencer and whatever he does. The only time I wouldn't support Phil Spencer is if he's trying to build contrast between them and PlayStation. I would be like, no, Phil, Phil, stop. No, don't do this. Don't do this. Stay in your lane. Your lane is to make sure that Xbox in name survives. So how does it survive? By putting their games now on PlayStation, by continuing to draw money, and then for me, the consumer, continue to build on whatever benefits I get from being in Game Pass. As they decrease, let, let, let's try to maintain something. Okay. If, I, if I'm in Game Pass and I have Game Pass Ultimate, I'm guaranteed day and date access to my to, to Xbox games. Okay, because if, if I love Xbox games that much, I'm guaranteed day and date access to Xbox games. Now that there's a possibility or the talking of we're going to now allow you to play your solo purchase games via the cloud, which you need Xbox um, Game Pass Ultimate for. Okay, great. I don't need a console for that. I can get a Fire TV. I can play, play it wherever, you know, Xbox Game Pass is available. Great. Um, support that, Phil. Support that. And, and, and lastly, you guys do want to make a new device? Okay, fine. Um, I, I would love to have a new device that's, you know, that, that can that's licensed to play Xbox stuff, whether it's a handheld, Fire TV, whatever it may be. If you're going to support Phil Spencer, then know that your support should not go beyond supporting Phil Spencer, making this a, th a successful third party publishing stint that has direct to consumer elements to it. That's your best bet. Do not, do not bait Phil Spencer in trying to be competitive beyond that. Their job right now is to be again, a third party publisher like an Ubisoft or an EA that is strong in its direct to consumer elements. What do I mean? Well, let me give you a prime example. Ubisoft, a lot of you may not realize this, but Ubisoft has officially released, it's not via retail, but officially released via beta, 
its own cloud streaming service. What you can do is go to Ubisoft Connect, load it up, and right now, I think the only game in the beta right now is Avatar, but you know, you can play Avatar via its cloud streaming stint. And check it out. You know what I mean? See how well it works. I think it's, it caps out at 1080p 60. Right, they're going to use that AI and machine learning from people playing it to extend it, add more games, make it broader, so then they too can exercise a direct to uh, to consumer stint, where gamers can play their games without having to own a particular console or even have a PC. That not a problem. Microsoft has an edge there. Those is Microsoft's true competitors, Ubisoft, EA, all those other places support them in their direct to consumer stint but more importantly make sure that they're supported as a third party publisher because that's going to be their lifeblood that's supporting phil spencer if you want to support them being competitive then phil spencer has to go no head of gaming has failed this long i mean it's worse than any other head of gaming ever he has failed to be and since he's taken over microsoft or xbox gaming has went to being a competitor with playstation to laughable versus playstation to meeting playstation to survive because we, we can't argue if it wasn't for the absorption of abk oh 2027 like phil spencer said in, in the ftc trial yeah xbox would be winding now that saved xbox in name to keep Xbox going under Phil, they got to do what I just spoke of. But if you want them to be competitive, Phil does not have what it takes in his mindset to know how to compete against PlayStation because PlayStation's pure strength is quality. That's why they can get away with the stuff that they're getting away with. That's why PlayStation can go and do some of the things that they're doing allowing uh, you, in order for you to play their cloud streaming service you gotta own a console you know what i mean and some of the other m more consumer unfriendly things that they you know people unanimous unanimously say that they do that's how they get away with it because of that there's no other way around it and if you can it, it, it they get away with it because of quality and if you are not portraying quality then you can't compete with playstation and xbox just simply can't do that under phil spencer he's proven time and time again he does not have an eye for quality so what is the new piece of hardware going to do what is the new xbox going to do i hope it's limited in scope i hope it's just about taking again microsoft content and finding various ways to give it to you direct to consumer and that's it just basically what what ea and, and ubisoft and all these other companies are going to do because if they're looking to do anything further then they're selling their fate so that's what you can do as a consumer you can either you know continue on this path and support phil spencer and keeping xbox alive in name only or if you really want them to compete that executive suite there at xbox has to be cleared out has to be replaced immediately with somebody in charge that has an eye for quality. And that, but if you think otherwise, then help me understand and help and, and help let me know. <laughs> and that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, here's what I think. But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They will lead you to, again, or not digital culture, cloud dosage and MM2K gaming. What I said, y'all have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.